T11s, streamer and dry, ready to rock. Here we have a, a lunch box full of a variety of different streamers. I keep most of my smaller streamers in a different box. This is like the meat. This is, this is like, you know, this is what's for dinner. So when we're going a little bit bigger, this is where I go and I look through trying to discuss, trying to discover what, what flavor is the flavor of the day. You know, so it's nice to have a variety, but I've definitely over the years, I've dialed it down from having a thousand different patterns to like four or five really solid patterns that I know are gonna consistently fish. Um, obviously my top choice is, is one of my own personal flies that I tie. And this is, this is the mini dragon, formerly known as the beefcake. Um, you know, over the years, black has been a killer for me. So this is like a, an average size dragon that I used to fish back in Montana. It's not, not too big, maybe four, four and a half inches. It pushes a lot of water. One of the key things I do with this fly is I, I use an, uh, a braided backing for the articulation instead of using wire. Early, early 2010, really, I was fishing the uh, Cheech Leech a lot, but I felt like it didn't push enough water. So I made something that could push a little bit more water, something I don't need to strip as much, something that if I swing it with the current, it goes with the flow and kind of dances with, with the different currents in the river. But, you know, as I was saying, for this river, we fish a lot of smaller flies. So over the years, I've had a, a lot of good days fishing with the Peanut Envy and the Mini Peanut Envy. So this fly, specifically on this river, the Raina River, this thing produces a ton of fish. Black and tan seem to be the two colors that seem to catch more fish than others. So my go-to fly every day the last four or five weeks has been this tan mini peanut envy. Another fly that's kind of like an in-between, pushing a lot of water, looking fishy, but also catching a lot of fish is the mini dungeon. I mean, this isn't new to anybody. This fly has been around for almost probably 20 years and it catches a lot of fish. We have a large selection of streamers here at our fly shop at the Raina Fish Camp. And these are staples. You know, when I'm recommending streamers to people, the water's so clear, this upper part of the river moves so slow that having something small that still pushes a little bit of water and is very visible, I recommend the Peanut Envy or the, or the Dragon or the Dungeon. And last but not least, a slump buster. And I mean, this is kind of my own take at a slump buster. Um, it's extremely simple. You can whip this out in literally three minutes and it's good to go. Single hook streamer, heavy bead on the front to get down deep if I need to. But most of the time I like to get the fly, the hackle really tight right behind that bead and not making the tail too long because then it has more potential to wrap around the hook. But even no matter what streamer I'm fishing, most of the time I strip it back to the boat and I inspect the fly between each cast. Unless I've got a fire burning in my pants for this bank and I'm not gonna inspect it, most of the time I bring it back, make sure everything's looking clean and clear because with, with streamer fishing, it can happen on any cast. It could happen on any retrieve. Every time I'm putting that fly in the water, I have high hopes of something eating it but I haven't had many fish eat a streamer that's in a meatball, a big wad. It, it has to be clean. If you're fishing articulated streamers, I can't stress it enough, just check your fly more often. Make sure everything's Ooh. looking good. If you get bored out there and you don't see any fish Appreciate rising, it, don't be bashful. Get a seven weight rod, six weight rod, a little bit of a sinking line, and just play around, have fun. That's what it's all about. As long as I've got a fly rod in my hand, I'm having fun, so a meat box.